none of it's going to matter if you pick up uh, the paper one morning and you read that some country just bought $10 billion worth of it, right? All, all of these things are looking in the rear view mirror. But if you look forward, there's $300 trillion worth of currency derivatives, bonds, equities that are linked to currencies, other sorts of currencies. They've all got the same problem, which is the currencies are all weakening, either at a at a rapid rate or at an insane rate. And uh, so Bitcoin's the solution to that problem. It's been at least four days since the world's largest cryptocurrency slipped below $30,000 and another 30 days since it slipped below $40,000. Amid a highly volatile macro environment, low consumer sentiments and other bearish indicators, there isn't much hope for a massive recovery in the short term. However, market giants like Michael Saylor, the co-founder and CEO of MicroStrategy, continue to use their platforms to encourage investors about the long-term potential of the cryptocurrency. In a recent interview with CNBC, Saylor establishes a simple fact. Bitcoin is the future of payments, investments, and currencies. The rest of the world just has to catch on, Saylor declares with his usual candor and trust in a coin that he has promised to continue amassing for his analytics firm. We will now take you to the entrepreneur's interview with CNBC. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations about Michael Saylor's interview in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. You know, first of all, everybody needs a certain thing in a very uncertain world. And if you look at what Bitcoin is, it's, it's a network of $20 billion worth of mining hardware, burning billions of dollars of energy a year, very de uh, decentralized, distributed all around the world. It took us 13 years to get here. There's only one Bitcoin. And if you go to Davos, everybody's talking about the need for a new global money. How am I going to store my value? And they're, they're debating, is it gold? Is it silver? What is it? And obviously, Bitcoin's the answer. So we have a solution to the world's problem. I think it's just a matter of taking a seat and uh, letting things play out. The just-concluded World Economic Forum Annual Conference is one of the largest annual gatherings of the biggest names in the world. One of the topics that were frequently discussed during this year's conference is the cryptocurrency sector. This means that crypto assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, Solana, Cardano, and other digital assets have the world's attention. However, we are still in a bear market. That is why organizations like UBS are sharing some bearish sentiments about the crypto ecosystem. In a recently published note, the multinational investment bank noted that social media interest in the crypto space is slackening, as are on-chain activities. It concluded that there would not be a turnaround anytime soon. And even if there is, it won't last for long. Here is Saylor's reaction to the note. None of it's going to matter if you pick up uh, the paper one morning and you read that some country just bought $10 billion worth of it. Right? All of these things are looking in the rear view mirror. But if you look forward, there's $300 trillion worth of currency derivatives, bonds, equities that are linked to currencies, other sorts of currencies. They've all got the same problem, which is the currencies are all weakening, either at a, at a rapid rate or at an insane rate. And uh, so Bitcoin's the solution to that problem. And we've simply got to wait until the world discovers it. So education, I think, Mm -hmm. is going to drive adoption. Well, you're clearly a first mover when it comes to Bitcoin. I would think in cryptocurrencies in general. When is the rest of the world going to catch up? Do you have a timeline? I know you believe that Bitcoin's going to reach the millions at some point, but certainly with any kind of projection like that, we need some type of a timeline. Well, you know, a lot of times people focus on the weeks, but if you actually look at the last two years, you could say the world is catching up. Two years ago, we hit a COVID crisis, and since then, the U.S. money supply expanded by 36%. Bitcoin's up 229%. Gold, the NASDAQ, and the S&P have all underperformed the expansion of the U.S. money supply. So over a two-year, a four-year, a six-year, an eight-year time frame, Bitcoin's outperforming everything. I think if you look out another two to four years, it's going to continue to perform. And there'll be some volatility in the near term, but I think that that's the price you pay for the performance. As Saylor explains in his interview, the crypto sector has only been around for less than 15 years. It still has a lot of room to grow. With it drawing the attention of platforms like the World Economic Forum, that growth might come faster than the world imagines. Till then, we hope you keep stacking your preferred crypto assets and watching our channel for regular updates on the space. Let us know your thoughts on Michael Saylor's interview as well as your prediction for when the bear market will end. Please drop your comments, thoughts, and observations below. And don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching.